Today in the news, we got some toasty information for Intel and Windows 11 gets an update. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me thank today's sponsor, Filmora. To download Filmora, just head over to the link in the description down below and choose the version of the OS that you want to download it for. Then just click free download. Filmora is a pretty fun and powerful video editing app with some pretty cool features and effects. Here's what I made with the full version of the software. Pretty cool, right? He's the double. There's also cool features like motion tracking and AR stickers. So go check it out, try the free version, and once again, thanks Filmora. In the last couple of weeks, we've talked extensively about Intel's upcoming lineup of CPUs, and so far, they are really impressive. The i9-12900K does its job as the flagship for the blue team and beats AMD's top-of-the-line 16-core 5950X. At least it does in single core, because in multi-core, it only beats it in Cinebench R23 for some reason, but it doesn't in CPU-Z's benchmark. In the 12-core market, we got the 12700K, and while it gets an impressive win in single core, it fails to dethrone the 5900X in multi-core. Remember, these eco-cores are not multi-threaded, meaning that we're comparing a 24-thread CPU from AMD with a 20-thread CPU from Intel. Then we have the 12400, which is probably going to be the killer CPU. It's six cores, six threads, and it's moderately faster than the 5600X. It's 6% faster in single core and about 3.5% faster in multi-core. But the 400 models from Intel have always been super cheap, especially the 400F versions without graphics. They usually cost less than 200 bucks. Now, on the other hand, AMD's 5600X is still $300 on UEG. US, so Intel might come out and be the winner here. And yes, I know the 3D Vcash chips from AMD are around the corner, but if they're 15% faster in gaming on average, and they still cost 300 bucks, which honestly might not be the case, I smell a price bump from AMD here, but yeah, even at $300, the gap in price might not be worth the performance bump. Let me know what you think down below. Anyways, why am I recapping all this? Well, as much as performance and price speculations are fun, there is one more aspect to all this, and that is power. And in that department, Intel fails. They fail real bad. A leak has just surfaced of someone allegedly overclocking their 12900K. They put the uh, eight performance cores all the way up to 5.2 gigahertz, and then they left the eco cores as bone stock. The power consumption for that overclock is 330 watts. That's more power consumed than a RTX 3080. Now, in its defense, at that overclock, the 12900K with its 24 threads secures a razor thin win in multi core performance when compared to the 32 threads on the 5950X. It's barely 1%, but still, the 12900K can achieve this with only consuming more than twice the power draw of the 5950X. Is that fair? That's that fair? Now, I know what you're thinking. It's overclocked, so it's not going to be that high for regular users. Well, I'm not so sure about that. The TDP for these chips is rumored to be 125 watts. And previous leaks say that the PL2 power limit for 125 watt CPUs is 241 watts. So we're at 240 watts already, but for how long? I mean, usually PL2 only lasts for like a minute at most, right? Well, most manufacturers ship their boards with multi-core enhancements, which removes the PL2 time limit. And I have a feeling that Intel will also mess around with that. So if you build yourself an Intel system with a 125 watt CPU, you'll be pinned at 240-ish watts when the system is under load. And also, I mean, there's auto OC utilities that are a quick and easy way to get more performance. And they're just making them easier and easier to use. So if you do this one click overclock and boom, 280 watts out of your CPU, well, you're at twice what AMD is consuming on a 5950X. Which brings up the question, how are these efficient cores really efficient? Anyways, with this insanely high power consumption and with the new PCIe power standard for GPUs that can go up to 600 watts, I wouldn't be surprised if sometime soon a 1000 watt power supply might not be enough. 
Next up, we got some Windows 11 news. The operating system released about two weeks ago on October 5th, and uh, yeah, it had its fair share of issues in that time frame. but we're not here to talk about that. What we're here to talk about is a feature that unfortunately was teased during the uh, unveiling, but didn't make it to actual release on time. That is the uh, Android Amazon app slash Android emulator that is supposed to come. Well, it's finally here here, sort of, it's currently only available on the uh, beta channel update of Windows 11, and you need uh, to set up a US region and have a US Amazon account to access it. And if you meet all the criteria, well, you get access to the emulator and a huge library of 50 apps. Yep, only 50 apps are currently on the store. I think I'm gonna wait for the official version of the uh, Android emulator. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about my hair. Just, you haven't seen my hair in a very long time, and now you get to see a small segment. In any case, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.